Okay guys, here's our next segment in our video series on chemical reactions. And today we're going to be talking about combustion reactions. Combustion reactions are a little different than the other types of reactions that we've been talking about in a couple different things. The first thing we want to talk about is that a combustion reaction, unlike the others, uh, you really can only have oxygen as a reactant and it always reacts with the hydrocarbon. So if we take a look at the screen here, we see that the general form for combustion actually includes specific chemicals that are being formed and created. Before, our general forms always said it could be any metal with any compound mixing to make new things. But combustion is very specific. You need to have a hydrocarbon. Okay, and again, a hydrocarbon is um, some sort of organic substance. So it's going to be a carbon chain that contains a lot of hydrogen. Now you can have oxygen in this, so your alcohols do work here also. Um, but we're looking for that carbon base with a bunch of hydrogens around it for our hydrocarbons. It always reacts with oxygen, and it always makes three things. Carbon dioxide, water, and it always puts off, puts off heat energy. Okay, so unlike the other reactions where you can have different uh, reactants and products and you kind of mix and match things, for combustion it's very specific. Hydrocarbon, now this is the only chemical in the whole thing that can change. This could be C2H6, C3H9OH. Um, it could be any hydrocarbon, this is just one example of it. Plus your oxygen, this never can change. Always makes carbon dioxide, always makes water, always makes heat energy. Okay. Now, the hard thing about combustion reactions is they look a lot like single displacement because you have a compound plus a uh, diatomic. So people tend to mix them up with, with single displacement. The key here to remember that it's not single displacement is you're using the hydrocarbon and oxygen. That's one way to kind of recognize that. should kind of give you a red flag. Hey, this isn't um, a normal single displacement. Um, we're going to assume these always happen. Now, one thing about combustion reactions that's not written up here is they always need some sort of mechanism to light them. Okay, so you need a spark, heat, flame, something to get them started. But once they start, they're very exothermic, so they always produce their own heat energy. Okay? So again, they're always exothermic. Now, let's do an example of a combustion reaction on the board. We'll walk through one, and then you guys can practice on the worksheet your other combustion reactions. So here we go. So let's take... Uh, butane, uh, butane C4, 4 times 2 is 8, plus 2 is 10. So we have C4H10, so let's take butane, the same, same kind of fuel you find in a lighter, those like fancy kind of lighters, is butane fuel. So you take butane, and it's going to combust. So if you have a combustion of butane, well, the combustion process is always the same. We always make oxygen, or we always use oxygen, we always need some sort of spark, heat of energy of some sort. So I'll put a little triangle here to show that. And we always make carbon dioxide, water, and heat. Now, we can represent heat by using a triangle here also. I don't care. You can write the word heat in. That means the same thing to me. Now with a combustion reaction, the only thing we have to do is make sure we balance them correctly. And these can be kind of challenging to balance sometimes. So let's work it out together. I have four carbons over here. I only have one carbon over here. So I'm going to put a four here to make my carbons match up. I have two hydrogens over here and ten over here. So I'm going to have to have five hydrogens to make this one match up. So I now have ten hydrogens, ten hydrogens, four carbons, four carbons. Let's add up my oxygens on this side. I have 4 times 2, so I have 8 oxygens, plus 5 times 1, 5 oxygens. So 8 plus 5 is 13. So I need to get 13 oxygens here. Okay. Now, anything times 2 isn't going to be an odd number. So nothing I can put in here will work to give me 13. Okay. That's a whole number. However, a little trick with balancing combustion reactions is do it exactly how I did. Balance your carbons, balance your hydrogens, and then do your oxygens last. And here's the trick. Instead of using a whole number, use a fraction of any sort you need. So I want to get 13. So if I went 6 times 2, that would be 14, or 12. 7 times 2 is 14. 8 times 2 is 16. So if I went 6 and a half 
times 2. That will give me 13, right? Now, you can't have 6 and a half in a balanced coming equation. That's the improper way of doing it. However, it is balanced. So my balance is I have a 1, 6 and a half, 4, and 5. So how do I fix it? Well, this can't be a, a, a fraction. So how do I get this into a whole number? I can just double it. So instead of saying 6.5, I can say 13. If I double this blank, I double my 1 to a 2. I double my 4 to an 8. I double my 5 to a 10. So as long as I double every blank, even the one that had a 1 in it, it will rebalance itself automatically. So if I get a 1, 6.5, 4, 5, to rebalance it with all whole numbers, I can just change it to a 2, 13, 8, 10. Okay? And if you're not really confident with it, you always can go back and double check your work. I now have 8 carbons. 2 times 4 is 8. I now have 10 times 2 for 20 hydrogens. I have 2 times 10 for 20 hydrogens. I have 8 times 2 is 16 oxygens, plus 10 is 26. 13 times 2 is 26. So my equation is balanced. Now, we can keep doing this all day with combustion. The only thing that can change is what's out here. So I could say, oh, let's have ethanol. What that changes, these will change here, but the rest of the reaction always stays the same for combustion. Okay guys, uh, go ahead and go into your worksheet and take a look at those and find the combustion reactions and you can work on those. Uh, that's it for today. Thank you.